Hello there. I've got to say it looks like the UK government is starting to put the SNP back in its box. Firstly, please subscribe and like this video to give my channel a boost. And I'm always uploading new content, so please do check back daily. And a big thanks to my Patreon and PayPal supporters. In the last few days, there have been a couple of indications that Boris Johnson is not only out to shine a very powerful light on the shortcomings of Nicola Sturgeon and her SNP, but also to take concrete action against them. And this comes on the back of serious questions about funding provided by Westminster to Holyrood for coronavirus relief apparently not ending up in the hands of business. The Tory party leader in Holyrood, MSP Ruth Davidson, claimed that only 7 out of 30 support funds had been opened in Scotland. Businesses are crying out for funding, but the funds aren't opening and the guidance hasn't been delivered she said. And highlandconservatives.co.uk said, Yesterday Ruth called for Sturgeon to urgently get cash out the door to support businesses and jobs. Incredibly, at First Minister's questions, Sturgeon couldn't say if even a tenth of the promised funding had been delivered to businesses. A leaked Cosler document indicates only seven of 30 business funds are even active, with Council still awaiting guidance on funds announced a month ago. The UK government has delivered vast amounts of extra funding throughout this pandemic, but the SNP has been too slow to pay this money out. That was and is a political choice by Sturgeon. Jobs and businesses are never the priority for the anti-enterprise SNP. You'd think that the SNP wanted the UK to look bad, while saving up for an Indy Ref 2 and Scottish independence, wouldn't you? Highland Conservatives also highlighted many other SNP shortcomings, saying The SNP has become the sorrow of Scotland, an incompetent cabal driven by a divisive and malign nationalist socialist ideology, implementing destructive policies that have seen vital areas like the economy, education, health and justice wrecked. It is doing real harm to tens of thousands of Scots, but the callous SNP sees that as a price worth paying to tear apart the union. Nationalist socialist. Now isn't there a shorter term for that sort of thing? But not to be deterred, the SNP finance secretary, Kate Forbes, sent a joint begging letter with the SNP shadow chancellor, Alison Thewlis, to the UK Treasury asking for another £1.7 billion of funding. What they want is an advance from the coronavirus reserve, which is earmarked for the next financial year 2021 to 2022. Then, presumably, they'll just keep asking for more money next year. One assumes this is all political, in an attempt to make themselves look good if they get the money, or make Westminster look bad if they don't. And Ms Forbes said, We welcome the £8.6 billion received so far in COVID-19 consequentials. Virtually all of this has already been allocated and is being spent supporting our businesses, NHS, public services and the rollout of vaccines. But as you've heard already, the Tories think this money is holed up somewhere along the line for what they are calling political reasons. And the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Steve Barclay, wrote back to Kate Forbes saying the UK government will do whatever it takes to support people and businesses in every part of the union. But he also went on at length about the amount of funding over and above the £8.6 billion that Forbes had already acknowledged. In addition to the £8.6 billion of additional funding guaranteed to the Scottish Government this year, we have extended the UK Government's furlough scheme to the end of April, paying 80% of wages for people in Scotland. The self-employed support scheme has been extended to the end of April, 
with the UK government having already paid out over £817 million to 162,000 people in Scotland, he wrote. Together, these schemes have supported more than 930,000 jobs in Scotland and will continue to support Scottish jobs throughout the winter. They continue to be provided with incredible speed thanks to the ingenuity and expertise of HMRC. More than 79,000 Scottish businesses have also benefited from £2.9 billion worth of UK government bounce-back and coronavirus business interruption loans. He also pointed out the vaccine situation and how the military had been brought in to assist. This deployment reinforces the commitment of the UK government to defending and supporting citizens in Scotland, as does the recent announcement that 1,700 jobs in Scotland will be sustained for two decades through investment in the Type 26 shipbuilding programme alongside RAF investments in Moray and expanded operations at Fas Lane. He continued. And when totting up the support for the Scottish Government after April in the new financial year, Steve Barclay said, The UK Government's support continues in 2021 to 2022, with Spending Review 2020 confirming an additional £2.4 billion for the Scottish Government through the Barnet formula, including £1.3 billion in relation to COVID-19. This takes the total of UK Government Barnet-based funding to the Scottish Government in 2021 to 2022 to over £38 billion. This equates to around £129 per head for every £100 per head the UK Government spends in England on matters devolved in Scotland. So the Scots get 29% more per capita than the English get. And that will definitely be met with an ooch from the Scots nationalist campaign, or at least it should be. And Barclay ended with, Given your decision to make your letter public, we will do the same with this reply. Thus ensuring every voter in Scotland gets the chance to hear the story from the UK Treasury side, not just from Nicola Sturgeon, Ian Blackford and the rest of the SNP mob. But the UK Treasury is going further. In his letter, Barclay also outlined how the UK Shared Prosperity Fund is being put together to replace the EU Commission Development and Social Fund grants. The UK Shared Prosperity Fund will help to level up and create opportunity across the UK in places most in need. It will operate UK-wide, using the new financial assistance powers in the UK Internal Market Act. We will ramp up funding so that total domestic UK-wide funding will at least match EU receipts on average, reaching around £1.5 billion a year. So instead of the money going to Holyrood for the SNP to spend on wedges to further their nationalism, it looks like it will be going direct from Westminster to local councils for them to spend. And it looks like the aim is to use these funds to level up right across the UK. And the SNP is not happy about this, not one little bit. Presumably because while we were in the European Union, the UK would send a stack of money to Brussels, which the Eurocrats would take about half of, and then send a small portion to Holyrood for the SNP government to spend. The SNP could then wax lyrical about the European Union and that they had money with a blue and gold starred wrapping to spend on Scotland. And I suppose what they were assuming was that after Brexit, they could take the same UK money direct from Westminster, but then stick a sole tyre on it and say, look how good we are to you. But it looks like Westminster might be looking to put their thumb in that optic. In a statement about this, Kate Forbes said, Scotland must receive at least £1.283 billion for a replacement seven-year programme. It is also vital that control over any new arrangements remains in Scotland, otherwise this threatens to be a significant power grab over Scotland's powers. 
I think what she means is that it will be a significant loss of SNP and Scots nationalist ability to bash the rest of us. So, interesting battles to come. And let's see if Boris Johnson and his team also have plans for London along those same sorts of lines. Now that would be very welcome indeed. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it by following the link in the descriptions box below and support me on Patreon or PayPal. So what do you think about this? Please share and comment and thank you for watching.